One class is for growth and reproduction, which is a form of growth, and the other is for protection. So that the bottom line is this, when you walk into the environment, you're either going to select growth programs or you're going to select protection programs. And I'm going to explain why it's an either or. I'll give you a simple understanding. I put a, a cell in a Petri dish. And in one Petri dish, I put nutrients here in front of the cell. In a, another Petri dish, I put toxins in front of the cell. And then I wait for a period of time. What's going to happen? The answer is this. Cells always move toward signals, nutrients or whatever, positive signals, because positive signals encourage growth. On the other hand, when a cell was confronted with a toxin, toxins threaten survival. So what does a cell do? It doesn't move to the toxin. What does it do? It moves away. And therefore, cells always move away from negative signals. Why is that important? If I'm a cell and there's toxins, there's food here, I'm going to move this way. If I'm a cell and there's toxins, I'm going to move this way. Can a cell move forwards and backwards at the same time? And the answer is no. Why is that relevant? And the answer is simply this. When confronted with an environmental signal, the cells have to make a decision to be in growth or to be in protection. Why is that relevant? Because when the cell is in protection, it stops growing. And the more protection we think we need, the more we shut off our growth mechanisms. And therefore, we start stymieing our own health. For example, cells move toward positive signals as a mode of growth. Cells move away from negative signals as a means of protection. There are some signals that the cell doesn't even care about because it doesn't bother its growth or its protection. So there's some signals the cell doesn't really care, so there's zero. So the bottom line is this, cells are either moving in growth or cells are moving in protection, but they can't do both at the same time. That's an individual cell, but I said you were made out of 50 to 75 trillion cells, so when I look at a human, I have a graded scale. You are either in some degree of growth or you're in some degree of protection based on the signals. Here's the interesting aspect. The most important growth promoting signal in the world today for a human is love. It exceeds nutrition. A child getting love will grow. A child not getting love will be stymied in its growth. For example, in Eastern European orphanages where kids are given a lot of nutrition but no attention, their growth parameters, their intelligence, their height, every aspect of their development is reduced by 30% or more, most of them becoming autistic. What is an autistic child? Think about it. An autistic child is not responding to the environment. Why not? Because somewhere in its development, it started to put up the walls of protection because it wasn't getting love. And at some point, it shuts itself down and is no longer responding to the environment. That is the highest form of protection. But look what happens to the child. It will die from the process. And the issue is this. When you are in fear, you're shutting down your growth mechanisms. When you're in love, you're enhancing your growth mechanisms. And it's as simple as that. It's a dual strip, one way or the other way. And there's a mechanism for it. In the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, the hypothalamus is the portion of the brain that gauges the signals. When the signals come into the mind, the mind says, is that positive or is that a negative signal? It has to know. And the idea is this. If it's a negative signal, then what's going to happen is the stress is going to activate the pituitary gland. Re remember the word pituitary gland in basic, basic education? It was called the master gland. Why? Because the pituitary gland is going to control the shape of the body. So there's two shapes, growth or protection. In negative signals, what ultimately happens is this, is that, oops, excuse me, in negative signals, what happens is this, that the stress activates the pituitary gland to get into fight or flight. Remember fight or flight? Here's the issue. I have two parts of my body. I can sub subdivide for you right now. This area has all the organs in it. This is the viscera. What do you think the function of the viscera is? Growth. Growth. This is the muscles and the bones, support. What else is it for? Protection. So here's the point. When I get into fight or flight, am I going to use my viscera or am I going to use my muscles to survive? The muscles. So here's what happens. The hormones released by the adrenal glands cause the blood vessels in the viscera to squeeze and push the blood to the periphery where the muscles are so I can feed my muscles and get ready to run. And the issue about that is what was the function of the viscera? Growth. 
Growth. But if I take the blood and send the, the blood from the viscera to the muscles, what happens to growth? It stops. Ah, under stress, you shut down your growth mechanism. Also, your is a protection system, but the immune system doesn't protect you from lions. What does it protect you from? Bacteria and viruses, things that get under your skin. So the adrenal system is for protection against things in the environment that threaten you. The immune system is to protect you from things that get under your skin. So here's the point. If you're running away from a lion and you're in fight and flight, do you think you need the immune system? No. And in fact, because the immune system uses so much body energy, here's what happens. When the adrenal hormones get higher, it shuts off the immune system. As you get under stress, not only are you stopping your growth, but you're now shutting off your immune system. You find that at work or at school, when school comes to the end of the semester and everybody's under stress, that's when everybody starts getting sick. And the reason why is stress shuts off the immune system. It's so effective that medical doctors use the stress hormones to inhibit the immune system in graft tissues and organs into. Why? I don't want them to reject the graft. So how do I stop them? Well, I want to shut off the immune system. I give them stress hormones. Well, if you're under stress, what are you doing to your own biology? You're opening yourself up for things to then come and attack you. And the last interesting aspect about it is simply this. When you're in fight or flight, are you going to use reflex behavior or are you going to use thinking and logic behavior to get out of the mess? Okay, why that's important? Because the hormones, remember I told you the hormones squeeze the blood vessels in the viscera and force the blood to the periphery? Well, the same hormones squeeze the blood vessels in the forebrain and push the blood to the hindbrain where reflex behavior comes from. Here's the point. Under stress, you are less intelligent. And you ought to know that if you've ever taken any school classes and you took that exam and you said, well, I know the, all the answers, right? And you sit down and you start doing the exam and you come to question number seven and you go, I don't know this one. And guess what? You can feel your body tingling. Why? Well, the first thing is you're getting blood in your arms and legs ready to run out of the classroom, <laughs> save your life. But then as you're doing this, you're realizing, I can't think of the answer. I can't think of the answer. So you say, okay, let me go to the next question. And that one's a simple one. You know what? You don't know the answer to that one. And the reason why? When you get under stress, you get ready for reflex behavior. Your conscious intelligence is reduced. So what does this mean in the world that we live in? Every time you turn on the news, every time you watch the TV, every time you listen to the radio, be afraid, be afraid, be afraid of this, be afraid of that. The air is bad. Flesh-eating bacteria are coming. Think. So the bottom line is this. What do you think about your normal adrenaline levels in the population? They're so high, we're all under stress. People are getting sicker by the day, and we're getting less intelligent. So in conclusion, let me wrap it up and show you this. Here's the point. The body is like a camera for the following reason. Whatever the environmental signal is, it's picked up by the lens. So the camera sees something. The lens picks it up and translates it into the film where you make a complementary copy so that the camera always makes a complement of what is found in the environment. Well, the truth is, in biology, it's the same thing. The cell is like a camera. Whatever is in the environment, the membrane is like a lens. It picks up the image and sends that image to the nucleus where the database is. And that's where the stored images are. And the interesting aspect about it is this. The cell will make a physical structure to complement the environment. So that's if you're a diagnostician and you're looking at somebody's health, their physical expression is a reflection of the environment that they're in because they're making that mimic. So the bottom line is this. When you open your eyes, is this the image you see? The reason why? If you open your eyes and live in this stressful situation, what are you going to do to your physiology?